What is up you guys? My name is Giovanni and welcome back to another video. I'm so glad of you guys to be joining me today. Today I hope to answer a lot of questions that I see over and over again on various forums, Facebook groups, etc. Today I'm going to be giving you guys the absolute bare minimum essentials of doing any LS swap into any car. Now, I wanna make one thing clear. This video is not going to be going into detail on how to swap an LS engine into a specific car. This is gonna be a very general video showing you guys what you need to swap an LS into any car. Hopefully, this video will be something to refer others to when they have a question, or, you know, hopefully it helps you guys. Hopefully, by making this video, I can help you guys that are new to this. You can use this video as a point of reference for someone that's new to this thing. So anyways, enough of the introduction, let's go ahead and get started. Now, a preface, if you're gonna do an LS swap, first thing you really do need is some kind of space to do it in. Whether it be a driveway, a shop, borrowing a buddy shop, your garage at home, whatever, this is a project where you're gonna need space and you're gonna need enough room to work. So, step one, acquire a motor. I can go into another video on all this, but your cheapest bet is going to get a 4.8 or a 5.3 out of a Silverado, Sierra, Tahoe, Yukon, Suburban, any of those trucks between the years of 2001, I'm gonna say, just to be on the safe side, and on. Up to 2005, your golden, most likely gonna be a Gen 3 motor, that's fine. Past 2005, and on, it's gonna be probably a Gen 4 motor and anything newer than let's say 2014 is gonna be an LT motor. That's all you need to look for. 2001 and up, with some exceptions, you might find a 99, 2000, whatever, but just for general rule of thumb, 2001 plus is gonna get you an LS 5348 or 60. That's gonna be your cheapest bet. You can go and get a car motor, which is gonna be LS one, two, three, six, or seven, or even nine if you want to. Doesn't matter, all the same fundamental block, or principle, I guess I should say. For the sake of saving money, we're gonna assume that we're gonna get a 4.8 or a 5.3 block. First off, what I would do, and to make your life easy, find one that's in a vehicle already that you can see running or get one that's certified from a junkyard or something where there's a warranty, there's a return period, whatever. Just make sure that the motor runs because now you don't want to tear into it. I will make another video going into greater detail on you know the whole 485360 whatever modification upgrade debacle whatever. But as of right now, we're planning to do this as cheaply and as efficiently as we can. Also, we're not gonna be talking about modifying the motor at all. This is just to get the motor in the vehicle starting, running, and driving. Let me just tell you guys this straight up, okay? Dropping an LS motor into basically any vehicle will get you a great driving, fun, somewhat fast vehicle. If you're putting one in any vehicle that was made before 1980 and it had any motor Chances are this motor will be more fuel efficient, more powerful, and all around more reliable than whatever vehicle you're pulling it out of. So just get that through your heads. Stock 4853 will be better than 90% of engines out there, okay? So now, you've got your motor and you've got your vehicle. What do you need to do now? Motor mounts. Step two is figure out your motor mount situation. Motor mounts are going to get your engine to sit in your vehicle properly and permanently, okay? Without motor mounts, we're not going to go anywhere on this build. So let me just preface this by saying this. If your vehicle was a GM vehicle that had a small block Chevy or a big block Chevy between, doesn't matter, any year, if it had a small block Chevy, if it had the option to have an, a small block Chevy, or if it had a big block Chevy, who are in luck because this is actually gonna be pretty simple for you, okay? The reason I say that is because the LS motor is dimensionally and in some characteristics very similar to a small block Chevy or a big block Chevy and most likely will bolt right up to it with some very inexpensive adapters. If you have a GM vehicle, even if it's a GM vehicle that had a six cylinder motor, but it had the option for a small block Chevy or a big block Chevy, chances are you can find a mount that would fit it and it's very inexpensive to do so. Take this car for example, this is a 65 Chevelle, 
it was an inline six vehicle, but the Chevelle had the option for a 350 Chevy. All I had to do was purchase the actual mounts that mount to the frame and basically convert this Chevelle to accept a small block Chevy. Once I did that, all I had to do was buy an adapter plate that goes from a small block Chevy engine mount to an LS engine mount. It was about maybe $100 total and it sits in here. I can lower this hoist right now and this engine sits by itself in the vehicle. So that's our step one. That's our most crucial phase of this build, I would say. I should say one of the most crucial phases of this build is just getting the motor to sit in the vehicle. It's 2019 as I'm making this video. Chances are any vehicle you decide to swap has probably either been thought of or has been done with an LS swap. Chances are there's something that you can buy off the shelf to put an LS motor in that vehicle. If you're doing something custom and this is your first build, I do not recommend it. Start off with something easy and work your way up to that. If you're trying to swap an LS into something exotic or something, I mean, you're on your own, really. You, I hope you have a friend that can fabricate. I hope you can fabricate because really that's what you're gonna have to do. If you can't find something, you're gonna have to make something. So there you go. Step three, decide what transmission you're gonna run in your vehicle. Now, to make this very simple, if you wanna run an automatic, hopefully you got an engine that maybe you can get the transmission with it. If it's two wheel drive, great, perfect. Just grab the transmission with the engine. On a side note, when you purchase your engine, get your engine as complete as can be. It'll save you the most amount of money in the long run. Try to find yourself a pullout engine. Even if you have to pay a little bit extra for it, you're gonna get all your accessory brackets, all your wiring harnesses, everything with the engine, maybe even a transmission, and that's gonna save you money in the long run because having to piecemeal all those pieces out is gonna end up costing you more money than it would just to get a complete engine from the start. Trust me, I know this. So back to the transmission, figure out what transmission you're gonna to wanna to run. To make life easy, if you want an automatic, grab yourself a 4L60 or a 4L80, okay? If you're not planning on making a lot of power later on, a 4L60 is perfectly fine. will hold up to a stock motor for years. It's all okay. If you're planning on making a little bit of power later on, something modifying the engine, even just slightly, just go ahead and spring for the 4L80 right away. If you're on a tight budget, grab a 4L60 for now. You can always upgrade to a 4L80 later. If you want to run a manual transmission, this is where things get kind of tricky. You can get a T56 transmission, but they're very expensive. So if you want to spring for one, grab a T56. It'll be fine. It'll bolt up. It'll be great. Okay, just make sure it's one out of a GM vehicle, not a Viper or anything like that. You'll have to get a pressure plate and a flywheel and a clutch disc and all that stuff, but grab a T56, that's easy. Another cheaper option, NV3500 or NV4500 out of a work truck that would have had a standard transmission and a 534860, whatever. You know, those will hold up to a stock engine for however long and it's simple, bolt-on comes with the engine itself. You know, those are a little bit harder to find, but if you find one and you want a manual trans, grab it. It's not a racing transmission, but it's a good work transmission. It'll get you from point A to point B. If you absolutely have to, you can grab a TH350 transmission out of an older vehicle. Let's say your vehicle came with one. Great. It will bolt up. You'll have to make some changes. Not for this video. Same thing with the TH400. It'll work. You'll have to make some changes, but it'll work. At the end of the day, it'll work. 700 R4, 200 R4, I would stay away from those unless you absolutely have to use them. It'd just be cheaper and probably easier to just run a 4L60 and it'll actually hold up a little bit better than a 700 R4. Now, if you're trying to do something custom, you're on your own, figure it out. I don't recommend trying to get a 6L80E, 6L40E, anything other than a 4L60E if you're trying to run a GM automatic. The six speeds are great in the cars that come in, but right now, the aftermarket, there's not much support for it. You're gonna end up paying an extra thousand dollars to be able to control that transmission. So just stick to the basics here. Automatic, 4L60, 4L80, manual, NV3500, NV4500, or a T56. Step four, decide how you're going to control your engine and transmission. In favor of keeping this build cheap, we're hoping that we would have got a wiring harness to go along with our motor. Now, sometimes either the wiring harnesses are cut 
or they're messed up, it's not worth trying to repair. So do yourself a favor, go to a junkyard and just go ahead and pull one out of a vehicle. Make sure it's complete. Even if maybe one or two connectors are cut off or whatever, that's fine. Just get yourself as complete of a stock harness as you possibly can. Make sure it's for any LS vehicle and go ahead and grab the computer while you're there. One day I'll make a video on how to pull a harness out of a junkyard in the most clean and efficient way possible. But for right now, let's just hope that you got a stock harness, okay? When you get your stock harness, you'll peel off all the old plastic covering and the umbilicals and all that, and it'll look something like this. There's plenty of guides on the internet, lt1swap.com. It has pinouts, it has everything you need to be able to convert this harness and remove as much unnecessary wires as you can and basically make your engine run and drive standalone. If you guys don't have your stock harness and it's gonna be too expensive to get a stock harness or you wanna splurge a little bit, look into micro squirt. If you feel you're capable of wiring your own vehicle and whatnot, look into micro squirt or mega squirt. You can get them with an LS harness already attached to them, already pre-tuned, ready to go. Those are a great affordable option or Right now, the uh, big talk on the town is the Holly Terminator, I wanna say it is. It's the cheaper Holly one. Uh, it comes in at about a thousand bucks without transmission control and about 1200 bucks with transmission control. But you're getting a beautiful harness, ECU, complete package, ready to go out of the box pretty much, something that you'll be able to tune and whatnot right out of the box. It's not a bad investment if you guys want to splurge the extra $1,200 on the Holly system. All right, and since we're on the topic of wiring harnesses, I thought I'd just throw this out there and talk about computers briefly. This is a stock truck ECU. It is a, uh, oh, well, those don't have the colors, but it's a green and blue one. There's also a blue and red one. There's many various different types of computers. Hopefully grab the one that goes with your stock harness, but just remember if you're gonna use a stock harness and stock computer, you're gonna to have to get the computer reprogrammed. There's plenty of places that will do it. There's plenty of online places you ship your ECU to. They'll reprogram it, take off the vats. Uh, you tell them what you're running and it'll be great. So now, hopefully you've got your engine, you've got your transmission, you've got a wiring harness, and you have some way of controlling the engine. This is where things get exciting. If you've got your motor mounted in your vehicle, well, you're very close to getting this engine started. Next step, which is step five, is the fuel system. Now, I will be making a video for sure going in depth on the LS fuel system, what you need and specific parts, whatever. Now for sure, what you'll need in the meantime is just know that you'll need an electric fuel pump, something that can flow at least 255 liters per hour. Now that could be an external fuel pump that you'll plumb in line, or it can be an internal fuel pump that sits in the gas tank. Now, depending on your intake, there will be some intakes that have a single line in. For those systems, you'll need an external fuel regulator with a return. A great option for that would be a Corvette fuel filter regulator. If your intake has two fuel line feeds, one is an inlet and one is a return, now for that, you'll need to plumb an inlet line and a return line. And the fuel regulator will be built into the intake so you don't have to worry about that. Just know that you have to have a means of getting the fuel from the tank, through some kind of fuel pump, up to the intake, and then after that, you have to have some way for the fuel to go back to the tank. The way these engines work is they pressurize the fuel rails. Whatever is not needed at the moment will be returned straight back to the tank and it goes on and on. Again, I will be making a video going very in depth on all this, so stay tuned for that. But as of right now, we just need to get the fuel to the engine. So now, you have the engine in the vehicle, you've got your harness hooked up, you've got your ECU that'll run the motor, and you've got fuel going to the motor. You should be able to fire this puppy and it should run. Congratulations, you've got yourself a running LS motor. If this is a stock motor, you're pretty much done at this point, you know? Whatever you have to do to get the car running and driving, stopping, go ahead and do it. That's out of this video. But as of right now, you should have a vehicle that works. Of course, there's gonna be some things that you may have to purchase or may, you know, have to modify or whatever. One of them being the exhaust manifolds. There's plenty of kits out there. There's a million different exhaust manifolds that you can purchase, 
find one that fits your vehicle and use it. It's as simple as that. Same thing with oil pans. There's tons and tons and tons of oil pans that you could get. There's aftermarket ones, there's factory ones that might fit, whatever it is, find one that fits and use it. And that's pretty much all that you have to do to run an LS motor. These things are not as complicated as people make them out to seem. At first, the EFI seems kind of scary and whatnot, but once you get it, you know, it's that simple. Five things you need to run this engine. So, again, I'll be making videos going in-depth on every one of these steps, but for now, this is what you need to run the engine in your vehicle. So, I hope this video clears up the air for you guys. I hope this video helps you guys out a little bit, understand what's needed to get an LS swap done. Again, I will be making some very in-depth videos going through all the steps of this video. But for now, I figured I'd make this video to give you guys the basics. If you guys want to check out those videos that'll be coming, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Instagram if you guys would like to ask me questions or leave your questions down in the comments below. Again, I hope this helps a little bit and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a great day.